Hello, crew. How is everyone? So, business pages or groups, what do you think? Do you need both? Should you have one and not the other? Are groups better than pages? Are pages better than groups? Should you have a page and a group? <laughs> it's an interesting discussion that depending on where you're at in your journey, what you're doing in your business, and a lot of very, well, a lot of many variables, hard to say, many variables, the answer to what is good for you and your business will be different. If somebody tells you that, um, you know, don't have a group, only have a page, or don't have a page, only have a group, did I say, i would forgotten even what I said, but you should have one and not the other, um, it, it's, it just depends. So I want to have a chat to you guys today about where is the most benefit for what at the stage of the business that you're in because it could be beneficial for you to have both. It might only be beneficial for you to have one. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of one over the other and where are you at, you know, in the stage of your business? Do you even have a following yet? Do you even know your brand yet? You know, all that kind of stuff. That's all really important as to what you should be doing on social media. Absolute minimum, you should have a cracker of a personal profile, okay? Let's just start there. Let's make sure you look like a normal human being that has some kind of life and you're sharing some kind of parts of your life on your personal profile. So let's just start there. Um, Many of you will know it is against Facebook policies to actually be building a business, um, you know, really spammy on a personal profile. So this brings us to look at look at something like a page or a group, correct? You're following along so far? Um, now, depending what you do do depends on many different variables, which I'll get to sort of in a moment. But minimum, we want you to look like a normal human being on your personal profile. So some of you, you need to go and clean up your personal profile and you need to be more active on your personal profile. You should start talking about whatever it is that you want to be known for. Um, you know, do you build an online business? Then kind of talk about it. Um, are you in the health and wellness industry? Then kind of talk about it. Um, you know, do you love fashion and jewelry or finance or whatever it is? Kind of talk about it in a curios curiosity type way. Okay. Then from there, like if you, if you're a bit more serious about building your business online, it's like, which angle do you go? Group, business page, should I have both? When should I do it? All the rest of it. So let's have a chat about that today. I get lots of questions about this and I see a lot of people fail at this because they do things too early or at the wrong stage in their business and it just ends up being a big flop. Then they get, um, you know, deflated because whatever they tried to do didn't work. And ultimately some people even end, end up uh, leaving the industry. Um, because they just don't think it works on social media. It works very well on social media as long as you're bringing your attention to the right areas, okay? So if we haven't met before, my name is Helen Martin and we have the most amazing online crew community here, which I am the captain of and here to serve. The amazing people that turn up here in our community live or on the replay and we talk all things modern social media to build your business online. So if you are an entrepreneur, you've got a home-based business, you want to bring that online, but you don't want to use spammy tammy uh, <laughs> tactics, spit it out, Helen. What's wrong with me today? Um, probably getting up at five o'clock in the morning and doing a what two hour webinar. I'm already I'm already exhausted. <laughs> it's only what 10 30 in the morning. No, I'm only kidding. Um, so, yeah, we've just got an amazing community here. That's just the bottom line, isn't it, guys? Um, so uh, what else today? I need to remind you a couple of things. That, guys, I'm not going live tomorrow because I've got mum duties. So mum duties is taking priority tomorrow. So I'm not actually going live because I've got something else that clashes at exactly the same time with sports and stuff. Uh, just juggling a lot of things this weekend. So um, you won't see me live tomorrow. So you get the night off or the morning off or the afternoon off of seeing me tomorrow. I'll put up a reminder because some people won't see this video. But um, yeah, after this video, you'll catch me next week. Okay, so I'm not going live tomorrow. 
Those of you that are in the current round of the video challenge, I did video nine yesterday direct into the group. So that's got content for days uh, 12 to 21, right through to 21. So if you've missed video nine at some stage before you get to day 12, you'll need to go and listen to that. But it's in the group, it's in the unit section. So that's all done for you guys. Um, and the last thing I wanted to remind you guys of is the acts of kindness kindness movement that we're doing from the September the 14th to September the 30th, you'll start seeing activity in the group. Some of you are watching from the group from next Monday, um, um, the end of August and leading up to September the 14th regarding what to do. So you'll see lots of information about that. If you don't know what I'm talking about regarding our acts of kindness movement in September, then just go and watch my live from two days ago here on my page or down, um, down the feed in my uh, social media group because I'm broadcasting in two different places. I've got split view viewership when I do my live. So how are we today, guys? Just a few quick hellos. Hello, Heather. Good to see you, Rick. What's Rick doing? Driving down the coast on this gorgeous Friday morning in Australia, chasing down a female turkey this afternoon. Of course you are. Um, exactly. I'm sure Gloria, that was Gloria's response to Rick. <laughs> how are you, Gloria? Hi, Patricia. We got Mike on as well. Christine is here. Lovely to see you. We got Susan. We got Beth. Olive is here. Olive's done an awesome, I'm going to share that with the VIP shortly. She's done an awesome graphic for the Acts of Kindness movement. So I'll share that with the VIPs um, after the live. Uh, hello, Janet. How are you? Good to see you. We've got Cynthia. We've got Cindy. Lynn is here as well. We've got Kristen. Good to see you on. Uh, Susan's one of our VIPs. Uh, hello, Wendy. Or is it Wendy Carol Dill Humphrey? <laughs> Newbie here. Everybody say hello. That is your first name actually Wendy or is it Carol? Um, so just clarify that for us. But whatever it is, um, please share so we can we can welcome you to the community. Um, great to have you here. Hi, Larive. How are you? Good to see you here. Good morning, Judy and Bob. Okay. So where you're at in your business, talking about pages and groups, this is important for you guys to understand because you could be missing opportunities or you could be beating your head against a brick wall because you've done something too early. OK, so minimum for groups. Let's talk about groups for a second. Groups are for a sense of community. That's why we create groups. So create groups are for the purpose of a, a group of people come together for the same sort of common purpose and we create a sense of community. First and foremost, you've got to remember that groups are not they don't work well when they're just selling groups. You need more than just selling in a group because they are there to create a sense of community. So this first thing to sort of store. So um, whether you need a group or not will depend what you're doing. So a minimum in this industry, you should have, whether it's you or your company is a whole different discussion, but you should have a prospecting group. All, all, all people that are attached to a home-based business where you don't own the thing that you sell. If you own the thing that you sell, you could have your own group. But if you don't own the thing that you sell, you absolutely need a prospecting group of some sort. Now, I'm not saying, saying you need a prospecting group. You might be fortunate enough for your company to have a prospecting group and that's where it works really well because of the volume of people that you get into a group and the social proof that you get into the group. So if all, whatever you call them, ambassadors, independent distributors, business owners, independent consultants, you know, whatever you call yourselves, when there's the company itself or one of the leaders from the company creates a prospecting group and everybody feeds into the same group, that's where that kind of group works really well. Because groups need momentum. Groups need people joining them all the time. Groups need activity. Groups need more than one person to be providing the content. Um, to create momentum in groups, you need people filtering into the group quite often. 
new people into the group all the time, new posts going in, and that can be a heavy burden on just one person. So if you've got a few people, you know, doing things in groups, like a prospecting group, then that can help. And then all your customers put all their testimonials in the one spot, in the one group. Awesome for social proof. So minimum in this industry, a prospecting group, but I wouldn't recommend um, necessarily that you create your own prospecting group because if you're just doing it on your own, you're the only one that's posting. You've only got a handful of customers. They're the only, you've only got a handful of testimonials in there and you're not feeding people into that group quick enough, you could end up with a dead group, okay? So it's really important to work out who's doing what in your company and how you can best utilize sort of that. But a prospecting group um, that everybody can feed into on behalf of the one company is the best solution for that, okay? It doesn't mean you can't have your own prospecting group or you're a leader and you start one for your team, okay, down. That's absolutely achievable. It depends on who you are, where you're at, at your journey and all that kind of stuff, as I said. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, this is what you must do because all of you are sort of a different, okay? Now, some of you might think, okay, my company's got that. Do I need a group? Do I need to create a group? And maybe you've got a page or maybe you haven't got a, a page, but you're branding yourself, which is what you all should be doing. So you're branding yourself. It's like, oh, should I create a group? Here's my thoughts around that. I've had and still have a lot of groups. I've done some well. I've done some not so well. So what's the difference and what I would recommend to you from what I've done? So I created a group for a group of people, but it was slow feeding into the group. Like they had, there had to be a certain condition. They actually had to be a buyer of something to get into that group. Now, unless you've got a lot of buyers, if it's a small feed into a group, it's really hard to create momentum in a group. So that didn't work very well and I don't use that group anymore. I have another group which is for a common purpose uh, for my branding course. We've just finished the 17th round of that and that's got a hype of activity for three to four weeks and then it goes quiet in between. And that's okay because it's not a public group, it's a private group for just people in that course. And when we're running that course for three to four weeks, there's a lot going on in there, um, you know, lots of questions and lots of activity. And then it goes quiet until I do the next one, but it serves the purpose. Okay, so that, that works well. My social media group, which some of you are watching from, let me share with you the reason that I started that group. So I started a business page because I wanted to scale my business. I wanted to go out to the cold market. That's what a page does. You will hear lots of people say, do not start a business page because it's a pay to play. Yes, the organic reach is quite low, but a business page enables you to go out to the cold market. If you ever want to do any kind of advertising anywhere in the future of your business, even if you're not doing it now, you still you have to start a business page anyway. You can't scale on a social media as far as a Facebook page goes unless it's a business page. Um, you just can't. Groups, you can't scale. You share a post from a group, unless somebody else is in the same group, they don't even see that post. It just comes up on their end as content unavailable because unless they're in the group, they don't see the content. You see it, you shared the post, you see it because you're in the group, but you can't share content from a group. So it's not scalable. There are definite purposes for them, but it's not scalable. So pages are, I'm not saying you have to do Facebook advertising. I'm not saying that, um, you know, you have to do anything in your business, but it is scalable. You could do a likes campaign and get hot prospects that are highly targeted to your ba your page. So, there's so there are a lot of benefits to a page. You can brand yourself. Your content is shareable. Um, you know, there's so many features on a business page that we can't do anywhere else. So a page is scalable and a page is very necessary if you're ever going to venture into um, Facebook advertising. But it's not 100% required, you could just have a personal profile and a group. But where are you in your journey? So the reason that I started the social media group, which some of you are listening from, is because my page started growing. And I think I was getting maybe 8,000 or so at that point. So half of what I've got now. So I was growing my following, but my organic reach was not growing with it. And I was getting angry at Facebook 
I was like, this sucks. My following's growing, but my organic reach wasn't, compa- you know, comparative to the the following growing. So it's like, I really don't want to do this, but I need to start a group because people are more likely to see my content in a group than on my page because of the stage I was at in my business. So if you've got a bit of a following, you've got a bit of a brand, you've got a few things going on, um, you might want to start a personal branding group. So this is different to a prospecting group. Don't get me confused here, guys. A personal branding group to make sure people see your content. But if you've got a brand new page, and this is, I see students do this all the time, and they're like, I need a group. I need a group because people on my page aren't seeing my stuff, and I, I need a group. So you've got a page with very few people on it. Then you go and start a group with very few people in it. You're not getting much traction here. You've just doubled your workload over here. So there's not many people here engaging. You've got no one to feed into your group because there's no one really here. And your personal profile is not your target market anyway. Or a few of your family's members might filter in, but they're not really your target market. So they're not doing anything. They're not engaging anything. They're not interested in what you've got anyway. So now we've got a page that doesn't work and a group that doesn't work. Okay. So um again i'm not going to tell you what's good for you or not but i think a group works best when you have some momentum so i had quite a few thousand people on my page first and it's like people aren't seeing my stuff i'll create a group so they're more likely if they really want to see my stuff they're better off in the group because they'll get notified um you know with certain posts and stuff like that so they're more likely to see my content in a group than on my page when you're scaling when you get to that point in your business okay is this making sense So um, groups can be wonderful because they create a sense of community. But I'm here to tell you because this was a really strong piece of advice that I got a few years ago and I hung on to it and I've created what I've created on this advice. You do not need a group to create a sense of community. Okay, I'll say that again. You do not necessarily need a group to create a sense of community. Try really hard if you've got a business page or you want to create one to create a sense of community on a business page. It is absolutely possible we do it here with the amazing people that, um, you know, are turning up live here and watching the replay. But you are more likely to get people to see your content in a group if people are not seeing it on your page. So I'm not saying you can't do it, but how much time do you have? Because you don't want every single piece of content being exactly the same there as it is there because otherwise they don't need to watch you there because they're getting it all here and you could be doubling up when you would be better off with everybody in the one place, okay? But groups have unit sections. Pages don't. You can put training resources in a group which you can't do um, on a page. So there are reasons that you might set up one over the other but whatever you do, If you set up a group somewhere along the line, those of you in my online crew coaching community or anyone that would like to join us, the link is up above. You can get in for a dollar and get thousands of dollars worth of practical training. I've got a groups boot camp. So whether you need a group or not, I go through that. How you set up a group correctly, I go through that. How do you keep people in your group, keep them happy? I go through that. How do you, um, you know, keep people engaged in the group and acknowledge them and all that kind of stuff? That's all in there as well. So if this is irrelevant to you, those of you in my coaching community, go back to the groups boot camp or those of you that would like that, just click the link above and you can get into that community for a dollar. So the important thing um, is, do you need it? If your company is providing you with a prospecting group, your company is providing you with a group of all the ambassadors or independent consultants or a training group or something like that's taken care of, you don't need to do that. If you're growing a team, you might choose to have a little Facebook group for your team downwards just for communication wise. So that would be a good reason for a group. So groups are great in our industry. Whether you have a personal branding group or not will depend on what you're doing. You might just be doing stuff on your personal profile and think, I I just, I don't ever want to do Facebook advertising. I know that. I don't want to scale to the cold market. You might start a group and that's where you drive people to. Just remember, nothing is scalable. A personal profile isn't scalable. A group isn't scalable. But it doesn't mean it's not a good avenue to feed people in. But what are you providing people? It's no different to a page. You need to lead with value. If your group just ends up being a selling group, 
So all you do is have pictures of what's on sale for this month and there's a freebie and there's a special and, you know, there's a Mother's Day or a Father's Day and there's pictures and it's just, um, you know, special promotion or a free gift or buy this much and you get this much more. And if that's all your group is, expect a really quiet group because there's nothing for people to interact and engage with. And, um, you know, that kind of thing where it's just selling, that's what websites are for when people go to a website and look at all the different options. So you need to have value just like you would on a business page. Okay, so a group that works really well has got people feeding into it. So you would need to have people feeding from a business page in there, a personal profile in there, or you need to be doing a lot of organic networking. So networking with new people and inviting them into the group, cold prospecting with people, inviting them into the group. You always need to be trying to be, um, gain, you know, gaining new people in the group and then doing things and activity in the group that's going to keep people engaged and excited. Um, you know, so it, it needs to lead with value and it needs to lead with really good content in there because if it's just selling, it's going to end up being, um, you know, a really dead group. Even our prospecting group for my network marketing business, we don't talk price in our prospecting group. There is not one post in there with a price on it. Now, some of you might think, huh, it's a prospecting group. How do people know how to buy something or how much something is? Because we're all um, chiming into the one group then, you know, the leaders are always saying, go back to the person that invited you to the group. And then you have a conversation about price or the different types of products or, you know, what it is. But it's not a direct, it's not a direct selling group where there's prices all in there. It's a value based group. It's educating um, prospects on our products. It's uh, got full of testimonials, which are really, really powerful to tag people in. There's presentations on our business. So it's, it's full of value. It's not full of selling. So, um, yeah, it depends what, you, what you've got. But don't rush into creating a group, a personal branding group. I'm not talking about a prospecting group. If you don't, um, you know, if you, if you don't have enough of a following or you can't feed anyone into it. So my social media group where some of you are watching from, I launched it. I didn't just open it. One of the worst things you can do for a group is just create a page and just make it open. Okay, my group's open and you invite, you know, five family members in it and, and that's your group. That's the worst way to open a group. You want to have a launch of your group. You want to have something exciting in your group. You want to um, capitalise on the fact that when people get into a group within the first 72 hours, they're called founding members. And your founding members, um, you could do something special for. Uh, my founding members in my coaching community have the lowest price than anyone ever. And no one can ever get that pricing because the pricing only give it, it gets up. It's only applicable to those founding members that are still there. That's a massive privilege from there. They get my training for basically next to nothing. That's a privilege of a founding member. Now that's that's um, applicable to that group, obviously, because it's a it's a payment based um, group. So that might be rele not relevant to you, but you might have a draw, prize draw, or something just for founding um, members. They get a little pretty badge in the group that says founding member. Just a tip with that: they actually have to comment in the group to become a founding member. So if you open a brand new group and people get in within those first 72 hours, they actually have to write something in the group, not just join the group to get the badge. If they just join the group, um, they don't get the badge because they haven't interacted in the group. So they actually have to say, hi, I'm excited to be here, whatever it is. I found that out the hard way with my social media group. So I knew about the 72 hours. I didn't know about the posting. So it was in the last 24 hours that I'm like, how come some people are getting the badge and, you know, others aren't. And then I don't know how I worked it out, but I must have just been watching and worked it out. And it's like, oh, shoot, they have to actually comment in the group. So then in the last 24 hours, I'm like, if you want the badge, you have to comment, you have to say something. But you can capitalise on those kind of things. Um, so when I launched this, the social media group, which some of you are watching from, as I said, I had 200 people go into that group within three days because I launched it. And I launched it from an audience that I already had. 
So it created momentum. It got people in. You got a pinned post up the top saying, you know, welcome, put a post in, you know, those kind of stuff. So you you start a group with some momentum. So if you're ever somewhere down the line, guys, thinking of creating a group, think of launching a group, not just starting a group. You want to launch a group and get a group of people in and start with momentum because there's way too many people in our industry here that have got dead groups. Um, and the reason for that is they just started a group and trickled people in and there's too much selling going on in there. So is this all making sense, guys? Can you just give me some feedback here as to um, whether it's a little bit thought provoking or it just clarified what you already knew or maybe there's something that you could do differently or maybe it's giving you a thought for maybe future time, six months time or 12 months. Maybe I'll start a group and I'll concentrate on that when my brand's a little bit stronger. Or, you know, I really don't want to start a business page, but I am going to start a group and I'm going to put some training in the training units. Um, but you need to know how to do all that. Your group has to be set up in a particular way to get the unit section to show up. So all of those kind of things is in my training in my coaching community. Okay. Just want to see what you guys... Um, yeah, it's... it's. Um, hey, Charlene, how are you? It's where the magic happens. Social proof and volume in groups is what makes a group successful. Lots of little individual groups with only, you know, 20, 50, 100 people in them, um, you know, that aren't active at all can be really hard. It doesn't mean you can't turn it around and go, okay, I need to provide more value in this group. I need to entertain, educate and, um, you know, motivate people in here. So it just might require a bit more effort on your part in putting some better content in a group, which is no different to content on a page. You need to earn the right for people to watch you. You need to earn the right for people, you know, to engage and interact on your page or groups. Give people a reason to turn up wherever you are personal profile, group or business page, give people a reason to turn up, watch you, listen to you, read your posts, whatever it needs to be. Generally, what I find on a deeper level on social media, most people are very surface level on social media and they're like, well, what can I get out of it? I want to start a group because I want to sell more stuff. So, And that's the angle that comes across in the group. So when you come from that angle, um, you can end up with a dead group. Okay, um, so yes, making total sense. That's good to know. Thank you, Susan. Loving the information. Uh, lots of value. Definitely got me thinking. Okay, good. That's that's part of the reason of this live. I would love a group in the future. And I'm sure that would be a really good thing for you to do, Gloria, when the timing is right um, for you because groups do create a sense of community. But don't forget what I said before. Um, that you can create a sense of community on pages as well. But if you're if you're at the stage in the business where you've got a business page and it's growing and you can see the organic reach isn't really there, you might want to consider a group. Um, but you don't want to double up your effort all the time when there's not much going on here and now there's not much going on here. So where I was having some problems here, now I've got problems here, I've got double the problems. <laughs> So um, it just depends where you're at in your journey. I'm not going to sit here and say, you need, absolutely need a page and not a group, or you don't need a page and you need a group. It really depends where you're at in your journey, whether you're just starting out, um, you know, whether you've already got a following, whether your company does any groups for you, or whether you have to create that yourself, and whether your company has any kind of policies as to what they will and won't allow. Some um, people are dictated to by their company. You can't. Some people are told they can't start their own page, even if it's their own branding. Some people are told, you know, create groups, not pages, you know, those kind of things. So depending where you're attached to the company, you may have different rules that dictate what you do. But just get some information and do a bit of research as to what would be best for you in your journey, whether you're new or whether you're more established, whether you've got a brand for yourself, personal branding, um, because you don't want to pop up a group, which is all company branded, defeats the point. Unless it's a specific prospecting group, that is different. I'm talking about a personal branding group. So they've got different purposes. So, again, it just highlights, depending what your need for the group is, 
there will be different branding that's at play, different needs, different posts, those kind of things. <coughs> okay. Uh, so Patricia's got, she's thinking for something. Okay. My group is too focused on selling. I will refocus my group. I love that. I love the fact you're here. I love the fact you listened. I love the fact you learned. And it's made you think about how you can do something better. And when you can implement that, then that could start to change things and turn them around in your business. So I love that. Thank you for commenting. Um, Beth, I have to concentrate on my page now and I've got my name changed. <laughs> Beth's been changing, uh, trying to change the name of her page. It's got to be a minimum 12 months, Beth, I think, and she finally got there yesterday. Gloria, in the beginning, piggybacking off an established prospecting group is fabulous. Let them do the heavy lifting. Couldn't agree more. I don't need my own prospecting group. I've got enough groups. But I do different things to, you know, a lot of you guys. Um, but my company has an awesome prospecting group which, you know, above me and below me and side to me, we all put our prospects in the one prospecting group. We can all contribute in the group. All our customers can put their testimonials in the one group. The group does the heavy lifting. The group has got the social pr proof. And it's it's very quick to grow into the thousands, multiple thousands, um, because everybody's contributing to the same group. Um, so whether your company does that or you need to create that for yourself, that's a, that's a different sort of question. Okay, um, Heather, I have a small group to practice things in a safe place. Well, that's another, that's a different thing for a group because that's not, I'm presuming you're saying that's not public, um, that's not for prospecting, it's just for practicing your own things in a group. So, you know, that, that serves a purpose as well. But I hope that helps in some way, guys, because I just want to give some clarity. Some people are being told don't focus here. You've got to do this. Don't do a page. It's pay to play. You should focus on a group. Now, it might be easier for somebody that's already got a following to say that to you. But if you don't know what your brand is, you don't already have a following of some sort. Like nobody knows who you are. Um, you, you know, you just have to take a lot of things into consideration as to what's going to be best for you. And those of you that know one day you want to have the option to do Facebook advertising or run a little likes campaign to find your pre-qualified prospects because you're sick of talking to your family and friends, then you would have to do a business page. It doesn't mean you have to be super active or give it all your time and attention right now, but to have one, slowly gain a following, put some content on there, um, you know, gain your influence, that might help you create a group later. It's different for everyone. So please don't think that you have to do, um, you know, anything in a particular order. It really, really depends on where you're at in your journey um, as to what's going to be appropriate for you, okay? So I'm not sure whether that's confused you more or given you some food for thought. Hopefully it's just food for thought, but just have a conversation around it. Don't necessarily take one piece of advice and go, that's what I need to do. You need to consider what's important to you. OK, and what your company does and doesn't provide for you as well. OK, so I hope that was helpful in some way. Um, so remember tomorrow, I'm not going live tomorrow. I've got boy duties, mum duties tomorrow. So I will miss you guys tomorrow. It's such a big gap from me when um, I miss a live to go to the next live. But I'll look, really look forward to seeing you guys um, next week for that first video. So I'm a little bit early, but have an awesome weekend. Um, you know, coming up and, and make sure you have some downtime and, you know, do something fun for yourself. And I'll really look forward um, to seeing you guys next week on live. Okay. Catch you then. Bye.